What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily. So this is the new ZTE Nubia Red Magic 7. Some of you might have seen it already. It came out last week. If you haven't and you're really into mobile gaming, then this is absolutely the phone for you. This is a gaming phone. And while some of the specs might be comparable to like a pro device or a flagship, it has the latest processor and a ton of RAM. It also has things like advanced cooling and RGB lights, touch triggers, and a whole lot more. All those hardware add-ons and software extras are tailored specifically towards elevating your mobile gaming experience in every way imaginable. Right from the start, you pretty much know you got a gaming phone. The packaging is pretty awesome, and inside you've got a few little extras, like an included case, which is great to have, but I wouldn't want to put it on the phone just yet because check this thing out. This is the Pulsar color combination. It's like a shiny metallic purple and blue, and it's definitely the wildest looking phone that I've seen in person. Also in the box are your charging accessories, and depending on where in the world you live, you'll either get 65 watt support or for folks in China, 120 watt charging speeds, which can juice this thing up to 100% in just 17 minutes. So because this is very obviously a gaming focused phone, that's what we're gonna talk about most here. I'm gonna demo eight or nine different titles in real time so you can see the speed and performance. I'll show you the different software add-ons that enhance the gaming experience, but first, let me explain some of the unique hardware features and go over the internal specs because that stuff really sets the foundation for this phone. Now, I don't want to harp on the look of this device too much. It's a really unique looking smartphone, obviously, and I think it's a love it or hate it kind of a thing. But besides the metallic pulsar finish, you might also notice that there's some RGB lights built in there too. You have the logo light up at the bottom in different colors. There's also a pulsing double light bar on the back. I feel like RGB lights are a gamer cliche or stereotype, but honestly, it's kind of cool to have on a smartphone. And the lights can be customized to coincide with various notifications and things too, kind of like an LED indicator. So they do serve a purpose along with kind of being a decoration. You might also have noticed quite a few vents all around the phone, a couple on the sides and one around back. It's obviously for cooling and inside the phone, there's also a fan, which you have full control over to help keep the phone even cooler. The fan will kick in when playing certain games. You can also enable or disable it yourself and it works. You can hear it running, you can feel the air coming out of the vents. It might be overkill, but some extra cooling is never a bad thing, and we have seen some smartphone processors over the years heat up, maybe more than they should. So why not have a fan help with dispersing some of that heat, especially if you're gonna push this phone to its limits. The last gaming hardware add-on are these little touch pads on the sides of the phone. These are essentially customizable shoulder triggers or physical buttons in a way. I'll show you how to best utilize them in-game in just a second, but they are a phenomenal add-on for like first-person shooters, for example, and it's probably my favorite thing about the phone overall. When it comes to the specs, not only does this phone pack the latest and greatest chipset, but it also crams in even more than some of the top tier 2022 flagships. It's powered by the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and you have a wide range of configuration options. Between 128 and 512 gigs of internal storage, and between 8 and 18 gigs of RAM. Mine here has 16, by the way, but theoretically you could get a 256 gig storage, 18 gig RAM option of this phone, and you'd have double the specs of the $1,200 S22 Ultra. Again, probably overkill. I can't imagine ever using 18 gigs of RAM on a smartphone, but it's there as an option. The other standout feature that's also pretty overkill is the display. While most phones offer an AMOLED screen with 120 hertz dynamic refresh rate, this phone has the option of enabling a 165 hertz dynamic refresh rate. Now, not many apps or games could fully utilize that. Most of the titles I'm testing here will try and run at 120 hertz and likely play at 30 to 90 FPS. But again, it's there and it's a crazy spec add-on that you just don't really see in any other smartphone. By the way, it is also a smartphone smartphone. It can make phone calls and take pictures. It has a triple lens camera set up with a 64 megapixel lens. But gaming, I think, is the main purpose. So let's dive on in here and I'll show you how this phone performs with some real-time gaming tests. Now, first things first, on the software side of things, ZTE 
once again offers their game space sidebar add-on, which we've seen before, but this time around offers a few more options and information overlays that are super helpful. You can check CPU and GPU performance, for example, and change the fan speed. You can adjust the touch sampling rate and the edge sensitivity to avoid accidental touches. There's preset display color profiles you can choose from based on the type of game you're playing. You can boost the dark areas, brighten the colors, whatever fits best. You can record your gameplay for later, throw up a stopwatch to help with timing your games, enhance the sound, create a custom crosshair layout even. But most importantly, like I mentioned earlier, you can customize the physical shoulder triggers, those little touch pads, to be whatever you want in pretty much whatever game you're playing. So here in Call of Duty Mobile, I made the touch triggers to be the aim and fire button, obviously, and the reload. That setup works best for me, but you can have the touch pads be associated with anything on the screen. Any input, any button, any movement, and it absolutely is the best gaming add-on on the phone. The touchpads are not only super responsive, but they require just the most subtle of touches. I believe it's a faster input than you could do yourself on the screen of the phone in most instances. And like here in Call of Duty, for example, it's kind of an unfair advantage in a way. Now, in all these games here that I tested out, I opted for the highest possible graphic settings that each game would offer. Some games are a little more robust than others. Every game plays differently too. They're optimized differently. They run differently. Call of Duty Mobile, for example, I consider it to be a pretty well-optimized game, actually. It's graphics intense. There's hundreds of megabytes of assets to download, I've played it on a $150 smartphone with no real issues. I should also note that on the phone itself, I've got the fan running here at max speed the whole way through. The display is also set at the 165 hertz option, again, even though we're probably not utilizing it. Brightness is set at 65 or 70%, and I'm playing these games one after another for a few hours straight. I really wanted to push this phone and see how long it could go consistently gaming nonstop across multiple different apps. Also, with each one of these titles, like I said, I'm launching and loading them in real time. So if you want to pause the video, grab your own phone and do an at home speed test, go ahead and see how your device compares. And I'll actually show a couple speed test comparisons in just a minute too. PUBG Mobile here, I think is maybe the second most intense game I tested out. I got this running on ultra HD graphics and ultra high frame rate and the Red Magic 7 cuts through it with ease. I actually went ahead and played two full matches from start to finish here, which took probably about 20 or so minutes each. And through that whole time, there wasn't a skip, there wasn't a frame drop, there wasn't even a building or a tree or a rock that wasn't loaded up and ready to go. I'm not going to call it console quality, obviously, but for a mobile gaming experience, I think this is about as good as it can get. This is a game that absolutely warrants a certain level of smartphone to play comfortably and consistently and smoothly, but this experience obviously goes above and beyond even that. And once again, on a game like this, those customizable shoulder pads there come handy and really give you an advantage. One of the games I've gotten loads of requests to test out recently is Genshin Impact. Now, it's not a game I'm as familiar with, but just from a performance and benchmark perspective, I can totally see why this is one of the go-to test games. You end up downloading hundreds upon hundreds of megabytes of game assets before you even start, and obviously this is one of the most complex, most graphics intense mobile games out there right now. And once again, this phone really has no issues playing through it at some of the highest settings. I actually think out of all of the handful of titles I've tried, a game like this is likely where you're going to get the most out of a phone like the Red Magic 7. I don't know that you're going to still utilize 100% of the internal specs here, but from a mobile games perspective, this is about as intense as it gets. And you can see that this phone really has no issues with the graphics heavy moments and having this massive world loaded up and ready to go. One of the consistent perks of this phone that I did notice is that initial launch and load time, whether it be opening up an app from the start or going from like a game menu directly into the game, the Red Magic 7 just seems to consistently deliver some of the fastest load times that I've seen, which makes the in-game experience that much more enjoyable. And with cheaper or lower spec devices, that's where I find them to be playing catch up the most, mainly going from the home screen into the app or from the menu into the game. This phone just seems to always have everything ready to go. I should also mention too, in playing all of these games and having having the fan running, you can absolutely hear it working. You can turn it on nonstop if you want, on a lower setting or a higher setting, but it'll also kick in automatically in certain games. And it almost sounds like your desktop or laptop running
surrounding its fan. It's relatively loud, not annoying, just noticeable, and you can feel that hot air coming out of the vents. Over the course of two or three hours of non-stop gaming, I didn't feel like the Red Magic 7 heated up any more than any other smartphone. It was warm, but I think the fan and vents helped quite a bit for sure. And over the course of six or seven hours of gaming, that's probably where you'll find the biggest difference in having that extra cooling. Now, hopefully in some of these gaming tests, you can at least get some idea of the speed and performance capabilities of this phone. Like I said, everything is being launched and loaded in real time, but if you are more interested in a direct side-by-side -side speed test comparison, well, here's the new Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And surprisingly, the Red Magic 7 is able to load up some of these games faster. And that sort of surprised me. The Ultra, of course, is a very expensive device with similar specs, but the Red Magic 7 more often than not gets there a bit quicker. So after nearly three straight hours of gaming, I wanted to show you that the phone got knocked down to about 53% battery, non-stop gaming at the highest graphic settings, the highest fan speed, 60 or 70% brightness, 165 hertz. That's not terrible when you consider this phone has a 4,500 milliamp battery inside and it's running at about the maximum possible settings and capacity you can set it to. Now, what did get pretty beat up for some reason is the built-in screen protector. I don't know if it was like my fingernail maybe or what, but this screen protector looks terrible after that gaming. So I peeled that thing right off. It's kind of a bummer, but it very obviously was messed up and had to go. All in all, if you are specifically into mobile gaming, I think the ZTE Nubia Red Magic 7 is probably the phone for you. It's unique to say the least, and the gaming specific hardware and software add-ons really bring this phone up to another whole level. Just from a value standpoint as well, this phone costs between 500 and 600 bucks depending on where you live. It's still half the price of a top tier Android flagship, but likely still with comparable and in some instances better specs. The downside of this phone in particular, unfortunately, is actually the Android software experience. It's no secret that the Z ZTE slash Nubia brand isn't exactly known for its timely updates, proper optimization, app support, all the Google and Android and Play Store stuff is here. But if you're wanting the latest and greatest software updates, good support, proper optimization, you're still not really gonna get that here. But if playing games is what you do, then this is still the phone for you. What do you guys think of the Red Magic 7? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, of course. But hopefully you guys did enjoy this video. Be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.